Today, we're doing a sequel of my brow rising video, which is also my highest viewed video so far. You guys have been asking me a whole bunch of questions about it, which is awesome, so I'm gonna do more videos about it. Now Michael Brower isn't exactly a locked safe when it comes to his methods of mixing. There are numerous interviews of him discussing his bus compression process and general mixing philosophies. So in this video, we'll take a second look at the Browerizing approach to mixing and go a little bit deeper into his compressor routing and settings across the entire mix. So I'm planning a series where I explore the techniques and philosophies of master engineers and producers, and I'll do one on Brower's philosophies and how he came up with this process. But for this video, we'll be focused on Browerizing TM. Also, if you have a suggestion for which engineer I should feature in that series, leave it in the comments below. To begin, we'll quickly review the Browerizing setup I covered in the first video. Then we'll expand on that to include his mono vocal channels, parallel 1176s, and the stereo output. Last time, we covered the four ABCD buses, which split the mix into four different groups that are compressed separately. The benefit of this is that a volume spike in one group will not disturb the motion of another compressor group as it would if all instruments were combined on one stereo bus. The multiple layers of independent pumping and motion give the mix a live, organic, and engaging feeling. To further increase the independence of this movement, Brower always unlinks the stereo function and uses the compressors in a multi-mono mode. This allows the differences between the left and right channels to also move separately from one another instead of reducing gain evenly in both channels. So a crash cymbal in the overheads could then trigger the left compressor a different amount than the right, creating a more enhanced stereo image. The four bus groups are divided by the frequency content of the instruments. Traditionally, the A bus contains high frequency information, instruments like piano, keyboards, strings, sounds that add air and brightness. The B bus contains all the low frequencies and is usually home to the drums and bass. Then the C bus holds the mid range, which is often guitars and things that like tubes like mandolin, slide, ukulele, or horns. And finally, the D bus. This is our ambience, our widest bus with all of our spatial dimensionality, home to the background vocals and effects, reverb, and delay. So all that is summed to the stereo output, and that's where we left off last time. But there's a couple things that are going on that make Brower's approach so unique. So next, let's take a look at his vocal setup. He's got five different mono compressors that he likes to use. He splits them up to use two in the verse and three in the chorus. Now I'm sure the order changes depending on the song, so don't quote the order that I've listed here. He also has a budget setup that uses only two vocal compressors, one in the verse, one in the chorus. So feel free to pick two and start from there, and that is still officially brow rising, TM. So the five compressors are the Empirical Labs Distressor, the Yuri 1176, the Gates Stay Level, the Federal Compressor, the Fairchild 660, which more recently he uses an ADL 670, which he says is quite similar to the Fairchild, but a tad bit brighter. So they're all going to the stereo output as well. Then he's got another two mono buses with 1176s that he does with whatever he wants. These are just extra compressors set up in a certain way to add some smack and haze wherever needed as an alternative to EQ. Now it's common to use one on the snare drum and another on the kick drum, but he will often try sending one of the four buses to the 1176, or the entire mix through the 1176. You can really do whichever you want with these and see what works. And that goes for all of the routing assignments in this method. Once you get this template going, you can try out some variations. If something doesn't need to be compressed, you could send it directly to the output and bypass all four ABCD buses. Michael has been known to send a copy of his drums to the stereo bus to create his hometown classic New York City parallel compression. But why stop there? Sometimes he may send the drums to the A bus as well, or he may send the background vocals to all four buses and an 1176. The possibilities are endless with Browerizing, and that's something to really love about it, as Michael found it really made him rethink the way he could mix. So next we'll talk about some of the settings that he uses to mix into. So Brower actually has an entire back wall of compressors that he doesn't touch. 
He claims that many of the compression settings don't move, which makes recalls a bit easier. You may have to adjust a threshold or two throughout the mixing process, but all of the big stuff stays put. So for the A bus, Brower uses a Neve 33609 set up with a 2 to 1 ratio, a fast release, and the attack options for this unit are either 2 milliseconds or 4 milliseconds, so a faster attack in general. Next on the B bus, this is a pair of distressors with a lot going on. He uses a 6 to 1 ratio, the British mod, attack between position 3 and 6, so a little bit slower, and the release on 2, which is slightly faster. He also uses the distortion number 2 setting, which is based on a tube-like harmonic, and activates the high-pass filter detection sidechain to keep the compressor from reacting too heavily to the bottom end. For the guitars in the C bus, he's got the Pendulum ES8 on fast mode, fast attack, fast release. And finally, for Edward the compressor, we have a width knob which he keeps cranked. This compressor is run as a VCA and in, again, fast mode, fast attack, fast release. So some observations about this, he really likes his fast release times, and with the exception of the B bus, everything has a fast attack as well which is going to create that pumping motion that he's after. The compressors aren't staying all pinned down. The gain reduction is dancing around a bit. This combined with his use of very low ratios will keep this movement very subtle and smooth. Now, having said that, we head over to the 1176s, which are a little bit different. They're set up with British mode, input and output set to 18, which is about one o'clock with the attack and release set to three, which is medium slow and are facing around 11 o'clock. And he's still only hitting about one decibel of gain reduction, but whatever he chose to send to those extra buses is gonna get some punch and crack to it. So you might be wondering, what is British mode? I've, I've used that a couple times. British mode can refer to two different things. First comes from pushing in all the buttons on an 1176. The resulting ratio is a multiple of all four ratios, four to one, eight to one, 12 to one, and 20 to one. It also changes the knee and the envelope of compression and overall makes it do cool stuff. The distressor lets you apply this aggressive characteristic to any ratio. Now the other British mode is the one to one British ratio, a technique that involves sending an instrument to a compressor without actually applying any gain reduction in order to imprint the color of the compressor onto the track, famously used by the Beatles with a Fairchild onto their vocals. Now, speaking of vocals, we'll go over those settings next, and then we'll talk about some software alternatives to all this hardware. For the distressor, he uses the Opto setting, British mode again, with a fast attack and release. For the 1176, he's looking for punch and aggression, so a slow attack, fast release, and again, try the all buttons in mode. For the stay level, he's got it in double mode with a fast release. Now for the next two, I couldn't find any concrete clues to his settings, but I did come across him quoting what he was looking for with each one of these. So for the federal compressor, this is an old broadcasting type compressor and it's known for its clarity in the low mids and for adding a little bit of top end. So if I had to guess, I'd say a slower attack, a faster release, and maybe a four to one ratio would be a good place to start. And for the Fairchild or the ADL 670, which he uses currently, it kicks ass without moving the meter, as he says. So very likely referring to an aggressive sound without an actual lot of gain reduction. So I'd say a high input gain and ratio with a fast attack and release, probably in the one to two setting on the Fairchild. And finally comes the stereo output. I've heard a couple things happen here before he goes out to a subbing mixer. His favorite stereo bus compressor is the Avalon 747, which he doesn't even use to compress. He's doing the one-to-one -one British ratio color box thing that I talked about earlier, adding some warmth to the mids. But he also works on a big SSL 9000 with that sweet bus compressor that's available. So his go-to setting for that is a four-to-one ratio, 30 millisecond attack, 0.1 second release, and and then adjust the threshold for one decibel of gain reduction. And that's really the thing that you'll have to adjust with most of these settings, the threshold or the input gain to get everything moving in the right amount. That's the big feature of this approach. The compressor is not always moving, but it's not always holding everything down. 
So I hope this gives you a good starting place. And if you know anything that I missed, please leave a comment and help us fill in the gaps. So now that we've laid out a starting point for these compressors, I wanna go ahead and give you guys some recommendations for plugins that you can use to substitute each one of these hardware units. For the A bus, I like using the Waves Pug Child, which is a Fairchild emulation, or the Waves V Comp, which has sort of a vintagey feel to it. And there were two that I found that were actually 33609 emulations, the IK Precision and the McDSP 6030. For the B bus, I really like the Waves DBX 160. It's a classic drum sound, and it has that same high pass side chain feature as the Distressor, which is really nice for letting that bottom end through. The 1176 also works great for this scene as Brower uses the British mode, so definitely try that all buttons in. And then of course you want to saturate this bus because it's your low end and drums and they really come alive and cut through the mix with saturation. So the decapitator works great for this or the saturation knob which is actually one of Brower's favorite plugins. And for the C bus, Tubes, that's what we need for our guitars. So the CLA-2A or the Pug Child are gonna be some great choices. And then for the D-Bus, I really like using the Pug Child or the V-Comp. And remember to crank up the width with something like the Waves S1 Imager. So for the 1176s, there's a whole bunch of great emulations. The basic BF76 and Pro Tools works fine. And there's a whole bunch of other FET type emulations available from Waves and SoftTube and many others. Now, moving on to the vocals, I really like the DBX 160 or an 1176 on this. And remember that this is the dirty one, so we want to add some grit with saturation. For the 1176, we already know what we can do with that. There's so many recreations of it. For the stay level, I'll substitute an LA-2A style, which is very comparable to the Gates stay level. And for the Federal, I chose the Kramer Pi, which I've always liked on vocals. And finally, using the Pugue Child for the Fairchild. For the stereo output, we have the option of not compressing like he does with his Avalon 747, or we can use an SSL bus compressor plugin. There's one from Waves, and there's another one called Cymatic the Glue, which also has a really cool blend feature for parallel compression right within the plugin. So overall, this should give you some ideas of how you can begin to browserize your own mixes. Now, it's possible for all these cascading bus groups to cause some phase problems, so make sure to turn on the plug-in delay compensation within your DAW. And if all this seems overwhelming to you, start simple and expand as you start to become more comfortable. Thanks for watching this video. If you're interested in learning more about Brower's techniques, I'll leave some links below for you guys to check out, including one to Michael's website where he goes into a whole bunch of in-depth Q&As and info about his setup that's really fantastic. If you'd be interested in a downloadable Browerizing template for Logic 10 or Pro Tools 12, let me know in the comments and if there's demand, I'll include one in the description below. Before I fade out, I want to give all my subscribers a super big thank you. I usually make these videos ahead of schedule, so I didn't really get a chance to say anything at 100 or 200 subscribers, but we're approaching 250 as I'm making this video, so just thank you. It's really great to have your support, and it really helps me to stay motivated and make more content when I know that it's helping people and that they're enjoying it. So for many more weeks to come, I'll see you in the next video.